Hey guys, welcome back. Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Good to have you in the shop. Uh, we're going to do a quick video. This one's going to move at uh, a quick pace. Um, a lot of time lapse video in there. Wanted to keep it short, but I wanted to get a lot in. So I've been thinking about a uh, forging press, and lo and behold, one of my one of the people I subscribe to, named James Ball, recently built himself one out of a log splitter. He bought a uh, power horse, I think it was and I decided that's something I need. So doing a lot of Damascus lately and it would really help out, especially um, I've been wanting to do some jelly roll and uh, press really helps with that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a used log splitter, um, whatever scrap I can use out of my scrap pile. And luckily I've got a lot of resources around me. There's a, an outfit not too many miles away called Floyd Equipment that uh, is basically a kind of a scrap yard, steel yard kind of thing. Has a lot of stuff available. So as we go, I will uh, let you know what I paid for what, where I found it, that kind of stuff. And uh, if anybody else needs to do this, uh, you'll kind of get an idea of what I did. Let's get to it and we'll talk afterwards. Enjoy. See you soon, guys. Bye. All right, guys, this is what I found. It's a 26 ton box tolled log splitter out of Gibson City, Illinois. I built this thing. It's about uh, 10 years old, something like that. And the place I bought it has owned it since it was new, rental outfit. And the guy that uh, in the maintenance department, I got to talk to him, and he's been working on this thing since it was new, maintaining it. And from what he tells me, it's in great shape. And we've got a five-horse Honda motor on there. And we're going to be replacing that with an electric motor from Harbor Freight. A uh, three-horse, 240-volt thing. All right, so we're going to jump right in and build a stand for this. This is out of my scrap pile and we're going to keep it uh, 20 inches tall and two foot square and we're going to leave a lot of open space underneath a lot of access and eventually we're going to move the hydraulics and the motor under it and surround it with some sheet metal to protect that but until we get past the proving stage here we're just going to uh, deal with the hoses we've got and mount the motor where we can that kind of thing need to make sure this thing works before I have to you know rip it all apart you never know when you're fabricating stuff like this sometimes it's put it together take it apart and try it again so we're gonna give ourselves every opportunity to screw it up okay we stripped all the parts off and got it off the trailer drug it inside we're going to get it tacked to its stand here. And of course, Big Dog has to know what's going on. Got her nose in everything. Anyway, so what we've got so far is the press. We paid $500 for it. And the stand, which is a freebie, just out of the scrap pile. There we go. And it's currently just under 8 foot tall. All right. Let's get this thing welded to the stand now that we know it's going to stand up so it doesn't fall off there and hurt me. And uh, we'll move on to the table and the ram portion. So this is the table, 3 8 inch, 6 inch by 6 inch tube. These, All these parts I got from Floyd Equipment out of their remnant bin. Uh, I paid 65 cents a pound and the total for this was $75. So we're putting 5 8 inch plates on either side of this lower portion and there's a 1 inch plate on the end of the uh, log splitter but I just wanted to bolster it and reinforce it so I'm adding as much steel here as I can and you're going to notice that that tube says Floyd on it from Floyd Equipment. So everything in the shop gets a name. So this guy is going to be Floyd the Forging Press. All right. So the ram, the upper portion, is what we're working on here. It's a 4-inch by 6-inch tube, 3 eighths wall, 
5 8 inch plate on top. The ram will sit right on top of that. And then on the bottom, we'll put a 6 inch square plate. And we'll put a couple of 1 inch blocks on either side to sort of reinforce that. And those blocks that you see on the back there is because the center of the ram is a little further out, and I wanted it centered on this. So I had to space it out a little bit, but it also gives me space all the way around both upper and lower plates for any kind of tooling that I want to drop over the edge of these things. So we're going to put the lower portion in. We're going to center it up, but we're not going to weld it on yet. So we can put the upper half on. And we're going to get our new guide plate clamped in place, get it all measured up. And we're going to use the guide parts, the original ones, because they're in really good shape. And we're going to tack them to the back of this temporarily so we can use them as a drill template. We we'll get this thing over to the drill press and drill some new bolt holes for that, uh, those guides. And the backslide pieces were in really good shape on this. I uh, had to remove a little rust, that kind of stuff, but they uh, weren't grooved or anything. So we were able to do that. Get it all wiped down. This thing bolted on and see if it will still slide up and down. A lot of welding on that plate, but I don't think I warped it. And this is going to about bring us to the end of day one. It was a good five hour day. All right, day two, we got an early start, 5 a.m. And we cut the uh, little ram tube off the old wedge, and we welded it on this guy. It was already pre-drilled and all that. It was in fairly good shape. And we'll center up the bottom portion with the upper ram and the slide and all that, so we're perfectly lined up. We'll weld that into place permanently on that one-inch plate at the end of the log splitter which is quickly becoming a forging press. All right, time to mount our hydraulics and our electric motor. So a couple of one-inch square tubes. And I've got a uh, skirt a table extension off of an old table saw that I had. It's about the right size. It's going to sit right there, and we'll mount our hydraulic reservoir pump and electric motor to it. There we go, get that lined up. So that electric motor, like I said, is from Harbor Freight. Paid $149 for it. It's a single phase, 240 volt, three horse motor. And the guy I bought the log splitter from told me that uh, electric horsepower is better than gas horsepower because it's more consistent. I don't know. But uh, I figured it'll run the thing. So I put a uh, three quarter inch steel plate on the table there, I drilled some bolt holes to line the motor up on, lined it up on the coupler, and then just tacked it in place to give me a template to drill through the table. So we should be perfectly lined up with our coupling. We get these bolts in here and rattle them down real good. And of course, the wiring and putting the hydraulic hoses back on. I didn't put any of that in here, but I used a uh, all the original hoses. There you go. And that's at normal speed. It moves at a pretty quick speed. And we wanted to test this out. And this is something I saw James Ball do in his video. That's a one and a half inch round mild steel. So I thought I'd give it a try. And see how this thing would press. It seems to work out pretty well. I'm happy with it. Now I can make steel hockey pucks. Look at that. Excellent. Okie doke. Let's try some other stuff on this thing. Right, so this is a leaf spring. And I wanted to see how quick I could take this down in just a couple of heats. And it did really well. going to take me a little bit to learn how to control it, but it uh, works out. Alright, so this is the second heat on this guy, but it's a one and a quarter inch by half inch mild steel bar, and I'm using a five-eighths inch 
bar for a kiss block and I wanted to bring this thing down to 5 8 square and see how quickly I could do that and forging time on that was less than two minutes all right here we go so we got the upper ram the lower table and there's just a pin that holds that on another ram and this is our control and we ended up putting a brace on this thing because it had a little deflection in it we welded up a new handle because we wanted to weld this nut on the end of it so we could bend this rod and put through the nut and we ran it down the side through a piece of electrical conduit as a guide we've got a return spring a little piece of linkage we built and a foot pedal so we can operate it hands-free and the spring helps the valve return to its center so if your foot just jumps off or you let go it'll go right back to center and that seems to work really well all right and that's all of our space underneath where we can put our reservoir and motor later on and yeah, there's not much on the back side is that motor coupling looking pretty good okay there you go guys and you can see it says Floyd right there on the front of it that's why it's Floyd the forging press okay guys so you have to let me know what you think it seems to work really well um, it uh, takes that stuff on like nobody's business and uh, I'm really happy with it it came out uh, better than I thought it would we were able to squeeze it into a pretty small budget and uh, I think the, for the uh, money I spent, it was well worth it. It's definitely going to help put um, a lot better, uh, larger Damascus together. So uh, I'll be able to expand those projects a little bit. Uh, that and many, many other things. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to thank all the subscribers, especially you new guys. That's really cool. Very awesome. And uh, if you like what you saw, click that little like button. and That'd be cool. And share. Somebody else out there might need some inspiration like I got from Mr. James Ball and his YouTube channel, which is awesome. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Take care. We'll see you next time. Be safe. Big Dog Forge.